It's Our Garden, From Sea to Harvest in a School Garden by Georgia Okana. It's Our Garden, From Sea to Harvest in a School Garden by Georgia Okana. The school bell sounds and the classroom explodes with the noise of book closing, chairs sliding on the floor, and kids chattering. It's time for recess. The children head outside to the school garden. Mrs. McCarthy, the third grade teacher, dream, dreaming of having a school garden, she talked to the other teachers, the principals, and the parents, and they all worked together to make her dream come true. The garden is careful, but by Miss Sue on the right. Miss Sue's husband, Will, designed the layout of the garden. College student Paul, Daniela, Autumn, and Allie volunteers to guide his children in the garden project. Student enters the garden through an arbor. It's spring and there are lots of chores to be done. Depending on the weather, some classes are held in the open classroom in the garden, the greenhouse. In early spring, Ms. Sue asks the students to make a book with pictures they cut out from the seed catalog. These are the flowers, fruits, and vegetables that the children, students would like to grow. Later, she and the students will decide where to plant them. Every day, one student is asked to take a bucket of food scrap from lunches and snacks and dumps it into the compost pile. The compost is made up of a soil, dead plant, and food scraps. Inside the pile, red wiggly worms are busy eating and turning these ingredients into casting, which the students call poop. Compost is mixed into the garden beds to provide food for the seedlings. Springtime is planting time. These are some few of the seeds that there will be planted in the garden. Pinto beans, sunflower seeds, cucumber seeds, and sea potatoes. When it's cold outside, some seeds are planted in the greenhouse. There, students find fill small plastic pots with rich soil and plant a seed in each. The pots are left in the greenhouse where the sun warms them Soon, the seedlings began to pop out of the soil. When they're bigger and the weather is warmer, the plants will be transplanted into the garden beds outside. Flowers, vegetables, and fruits are planted in the beds of rich compost with compost earth. A teepee made of bamboo poles stand in the middle of the garden. Some students plant pole bean seeds at the base of the each pole. The plants will grow up the teepee and sprout their pods. Meanwhile, in the morning shade of the school, Paul hands out salad, green, and flower seeds to plant in a waffle bed. The bed's low walls of adobe bricks help keep water in. Another group of students plant squash seedlings. Danelle helps a student transplant a tomato seeding. Once the seeds and the seedlings are in ground, the beds are watered and covered with a mulch of straw to keep the soil from drying out. A lot of water is needed to keep the garden healthy. When it rains, water flows off the roof, down the drain pipe, and into an underground tank called a cistern. A solar panel on the roof of the outdoor classroom creates electricity to run the pump that draws water from the cistern. One of the students' favorite job is watering the garden. Miss Sue fills the colorful water, watering can for them. The tomato plants are surrounded by plastic tubes filled with water. During the day, the sun warms the water in the tube. At night, the tubes provide warmth that tomatoes' roots need to grow. When there's no rainwater in the cistern, the hose attached to an outdoor faucet is used to keep the soil moist and plants healthy. Even when the students aren't at school, there are lots going on in the garden. A post with holes drilled into it became a nesting box for mants and bees, which don't sting. Birds come to eat at the feeder. Worms are busy eating and making tunnels in the compost pile. Flour produces a sweet liquor called liquid called nectar. When a bird, a bee, or a butterfly goes into a flower to drink the nectar, a powder called pollen sticks to them. And when they fly into another flower, the pollens rub off. Pollens allow the flowers to make the seed that will grow into flowers, fruits, or vegetables. This process is called pollination. In the early spring, a teacher orders the butterfly cocoon by mail. When they arrive, the students put the cocoon in a net cage to raise them in the classroom. 
When the butterfly emerges, they are taken to the garden and released so they can pollinate the plants. Many different creatures live in the garden or come by to visit. Crickets and ladybugs, grasshoppers and beetles fly, hop, or crawl about. Pip bugs, also called roly polies, sorry, pill bugs, also called roly polies, golfers, and even garter snakes can be found living among the garden plants for tunneling in the soil. There are lots of things in the garden to write and draw about. An easel in the middle of the garden invites anyone to draw what they see or write down their thoughts and experiences. Some students use leaves to make leaf prints. Their art decorates the greenhouse and the art outdoor classroom. While the plants are growing during the warm spring days, there's still a lot of work to do in the garden. Students mix and mix sand, dirt, water, and cut up straws to make adobe bricks. The bricks are used to make a low wall for waffle beds. In the southwest, adobe bricks are still used today to build homes. Adobe is also used to coat, to coat the horno, the traditional oven used to bake bread. Every spring, the horno in the corner of the outdoor classroom gets a fresh coat of adobe. There are many plants in the, er in the herb garden, such as basil, tarragon, lemon, palm chives, sage, lemon verbena, and Egyptian walking onions. Every plant has its own taste and smell. Radishes are harv harvested in the spring. Ms. Sue asked some students to pick the radishes. After washing the dirt off them, the children bite into the bright red vegetables. One girl found finds her too spicy and drops it into the compost pile. More food for the worms. On special afternoons and weekends, the garden becomes a place where the school community gathers. Students come back with their parents, sister, brother, grandparents, and friends. They compost, seed, plant, transplant, weed, water, and dig. By now, the flowers are blooming and the beds are green. The garden is flourishing with so much care. Garden chores continue into the summer. School is closed, but the garden is a beehive of activities. It provides the setting for music and gathering of children, grown-ups, friends, and families. The music fills the garden with joy. By August, many of the fruits and vegetables are ripe. Cooking and eating becomes an outgo ongoing activity in the garden. A father helps the children make pizza on one community day. First, they mix and punch the dough. Then they roll it out and roll with a rolling pin and pour oil on the flat dough. Ripe tomatoes are cut up and go on top. And last, of course, is the grated cheese. After a lot, a hot fire burning down their horno, the coals are leveled and the pizza goes in. When the pizza, sizzling pizza is taken up, a group of hungry gardeners appear. The slices disappear like magic. Unfortunately, there are many more pizzas to come. Fortunately, there are many more pizzas to come. Summer is over and another school year begins. The leaves on the trees are turning color and many of the garden's fruits and vegetables are ready to be picked. Students take turns disappearing into the teepee to, pile, to pick pole beans from the vines. One of the garden beds was planted in a traditional Native American way. It's called a three sister garden. Corn is planted together with pinto beans and squash. The bean vines grow up the corn stalk. The corn and the squash leaves shade the soil to keep it moist. And the pinto beans are harvested after the pods dry up and turn tan. tan. By September, most of the tomatoes are ripe. Each student is given a limit as to how many they can pick so there are enough left for later classes. As the fall goes on, the day starts getting cooler. Some of the tomatoes are still green. Allie shows the students how to ripen green tomatoes by putting them into a paper bag with a banana. Ms. Sue shows some children how to harvest potatoes. Using a shovel or trowel, the students carefully dig down next to the stern. Since potatoes spread out as they grow, digging must be done carefully so the shovels do not cut into them. Later, Allie helps them identify the different kinds of potatoes they have harvested. 
Cabbages are a real challenge to pick. Their long, strong roots test the strength and stamina of some of the bigger kids. Lemon cucumbers, also called apple cucumbers, are a new experience for most of the students. The children like them because they can be eaten like apples. In the Three Sister Garden, the strawberry corn is ready for harvesting. The ears are taken off the stalk, husted, and the kernels picked off the cob and saved in the jar. Later, the kernels are heated in oil and turned into delicious popcorn snack, much to the students' delight. The harvest becomes a chance for Miss Sue to quiz the students on the variety of crops the garden has produced. She makes a game of the quiz, placing the answer face down on slips of paper under each fruit, vegetable, or herb. Just like this. To celebrate the end of the harvest, a series of lunches are prepared. With many of the garden's vegetables, these become festival of good food and fun. The last community day of the year brings students and families together to prepare the garden for winter. The air is crisp and cold. Frost has turned the tree to gold. Wind has scattered many leaves to the ground. The green plants for summer are shriveled and brown. Dead plants are yanked out of the ground and put into a compost pile. Compost is strained and mixed into the soil. The strawberry plants in the beds are mulched with straw and all is ready to be covered with a blanket of snow. Sleep tight, garden, until next year. The end.